for me, my main thing was was always to write something that made people feel not alone. So as much as the title says Lonely Out of Brave, I wanted I wanted people to feel brave through their loneliness by listening to the record and connecting with it. Because I guess I guess that's what music's always done to me. Why I am here? Um, I am here because I want to give a backstory and an explanation to why I'm even going in for my 10 year anniversary of re-recording Lonely Out of Breath. I've had 10 years experience of releasing music. Um, half of that time I've had in a major and half of that time I've had being independent. And for me that half of being independent and releasing music off my own back it's now made me with the kind of knowledge and experience that i've had want to go back and and gain control and ownership over my first two albums that i don't have There's a discussion that I want I want brought up in this because I'm still learning, you know, constantly. Um, and I say I would have only really learned about this the way my career has gone, you know, um, because I didn't know anything about the back end stuff when I was 19, 20. See something just ain't right. Oh, up until recently, uh, you know, when we started to go into the accounts quite a substantial amount of money, like half a million quid um, to recoup and in calculations of my first record. If I'd only ever released my first two albums, then it would take me 40 years to recoup. At the time, and I'm guessing it's still the same now, I split up in 80-20 deals or 75-25 percentages, the majority going to the major, going to the label. So they recoup their money spent off your 20%. So their 80 or 75, or whatever it may be, will always be making money and you're always recouping back off the 20%. But these are little bits of information that I have no notion of as a kid. It's quite a contrast from being in an independent state where you are the only and last opinion of whatever you want to take. You know? Whereas when there's money involved and you don't own things, other people's opinions are the sign off, which then complicates things. Because when you don't own your own art, other people's, uh, other people's, not validation, but other people's yes will make things happen. Whereas <laughs> that can be battles as, as time goes on. As you go through the process, definitely as a musician, and you go from independent into label, you go through that experience, you go like into the kind of the world of timelines and mixes and other people's opinions, and that then can vary of how pure other people's opinions are, because what are people giving their opinions over? You know? The danger of, of expecting any validation of anyone to then create art is dangerous because even if they're your best friends or your family, people can change their opinions quickly and you know they're not in your head and you shouldn't need to, uh, you shouldn't need to have validation um, to create the art that you want. I think vulnerability, I've always been as vulnerable, I think. 
what struck me the most was listening back to myself at 1920 and sitting down with all the lyrics and, and listening back to the original takes and the voice by itself, kind of bringing back into the conversation of, of how vulnerable it was. It, that felt very honest then, you know, um, which was why I was so focused on the tone, because the tone was the honesty as well as the lyrics. You know, I've tried to, I've tried to maintain vulnerability in my art as much as possible, because I feel like that's where people connect the most you know. it's also where people get freaked out the most like, ah, it's, it's a bit you know i need to be lifted or i need to be whatever it is but but sometimes i think for me anyway vulnerability is the the key of what connects you with music it was about re-piecing together the old album but still keeping the feeling and the message and the tone and the flavour of the first album and not changing it because I love the first album but just breathing a new bit of life into it. I never feel like a great song ever dies so in that sentiment I feel like every piece of music can be reborn in a, in a, in a new set of ears or a new audience you know. To go back in on an old record was like oh I have to do it justice. So I love that album, you know. So I have to have to do it justice. So I was shit scared. I'll be straight up because I'm like, it's like going back into something that deserves to kind of go back in. There's loads of songs on the album that deserve a new bit of life. You know, people know the singles and the fans of the album know the album, but there's other moments I'm like, nah, they need to they, work, they, they need to have a, a world of their own again. You know what I mean? The art that I've been making has always been from my heart. Um, I've always loved what I've put out. Can't look back at the, the projects I released and go, oh, you know what, that wasn't really me and I'm only me now, you know. I loved all the art that I put out because it was, this, it was the stuff that I wanted to make, you know. Sitting back, staring through that haze off that road on that beaten track, sitting back. Staring through the haze of that the initial thing was really going back and hearing the early vocals. That was the first thing that I wanted to do. That was the thing I was most concerned about, because my voice has changed. That was the thing that I was like, nah, I don't know if I can do this. But as I sat, it took a while, it took a couple of days of like listening, 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 listening. And to, to also like be true to my tone now, like not mimic myself then. For my whole first album, I never thought of myself as a singer, I was always a rapper that had tone. And in the whole process of that first album, I was still in that mindset, so uh, to come back then 10 years later and listen to the non-singer version of myself and realise that, all right, there's, there's stuff to be learned from the freedom of the voice, but then I've also found my voice in the last 10 years. Every album title has been a diary entry, so Lonely Out of Brave was how I felt at that time. Inner Standing was how I felt at that point. When I wake up, don't forget to look up. These are all moments of kind of encapsulated in the, in the title itself of how I felt. Uh, Lonely Out of Brave 10 years on, I think it's a bit like, uh, I think it's a bit like holding up a mirror of a younger self. So for me, personally, it was more of showing where I've come in the journey of life, you know, um, musically and just personally, because listening back to that record was where exactly I was at for the first 21 years of my life. So that was the diary entry then, it's like reading something very personal, a letter to yourself. Um, and so in reading that letter to myself, I'm also able to give back to myself by, by re-recording it and, and, and having control over it. And it was kind of like me and my 19-year-old self having a conversation and that. He was telling me how he was feeling. And I was saying, that it's all right, I've learned a bit. I'm here to just look after you a bit that you didn't even realize you needed. At the start it was strange because you have to go back into that mindset, you know, 
I wanted to be faithful to the feeling of it. I needed to go back into that space and really feel the sentiment of what it was about. Um, so yeah, re-recording it was quite, uh, was quite therapeutic in a way. At the start I wasn't because I had to go back into that place and I realised that I was angry and paranoid and I was lonely. Um, I didn't really understand, it wasn't like a tangible thing that I could make any sense out of things. So for me that was my view on the world. So going back into that and then realising where I've come to, um, yeah, it was definitely, you know, it was definitely quite a calming experience on the back end of it once I've had that. At the start I was shit myself, but yeah, I didn't tell no There's always a thing in, in music and in art in general, like the the pain and the suffering artist is, you know, you always need to connect with them. I was always in the mindset of like, after every heartbreak, that's when I wrote my best music. There's something in that, but there's also a danger in that, that the subconscious then chases pain and suffering. I did anticipate it being difficult because, you know, the music I make now and the place I'm at in my head in general is quite, is quite different. And for me it was, it was sitting and listening through the music, which I find very difficult anyway with stuff that I've created because, you know, as time's gone on and as you fine tune your art, you then, everything becomes more precious to you. So for me it was more like, do I even, you know, how do I even go about listening to it and not wanting to change loads of things? can't go in and butcher this and just make it into some self-indulgent new, new version which is what I wanted to do at the start. You know, let's pitch everything down and, and just make the end of I need drum and bass or so just fuck it up, you know what I mean? And like make something new of it. But so that was you know where I thought was gonna be the, the problems but it was it was mainly that initial stage of unearthing the younger self. That was the, the difficult thing of finding where was that headspace. And that just that just came that just came with listening listening and being and separating myself and separating my now from from um, like where my head's at now to kind of get back into that place but there's a danger of that you know what I mean it's like it can be therapeutic if you have the right balance of it if you go back into it all the time then you feel that the art can only be a certain way if you feel a certain you know yeah if you feel the pain it's my whole thing from the start of me doing music in general was I wanted to show that there's no boundaries to art. You know, there's no time boundaries, there's no age, there's no sonic boundaries, there's no genre boundaries. Uh, I always, I always feel that with musicians, there's always this kind of pressure of like you need to make a specific style of art, right? or someone like that album. Oh, let's, just, I, I want the oldest, or you know. It has to be in this, whereas that's rubbish, really. And it's all that I always feel that, that that's something that is a condition learned by the industry. And my my progression always is to make sure that for every project, every art piece, every interview, every last little breath or whatever I've got here, that we open people's minds a bit and break boundaries down, because there is no limit to any of this. Um, and for me. Being independent has re-taught me that message in myself, like, yo, there is no boundaries on this. Put the money up, get the team right, and release what the fuck you want to do, you know, and, and be creatively free. And then hopefully inspire other people to be creatively free, because, you know, then the next generation can be even more free. And you don't have to unlearn stuff, you're just getting the knowledge straight up. So we pass something down straight away so you can't get, you know, fooled into anything or you can't get blinded by anything because we've got our generation hopefully that are just passing some knowledge down rather than just like, you know, keeping stun. They did nothing for me, cause I need sunshine, I need angels that I need. Sunshine
something good, yeah, I need a skies I need And no oh, oh, times I need yeah, yeah, yeah. Something good Something good Something good, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 Thank you.